Hey, this is Russ for DevotedGolfer.tv. I'm here with Eric Boyson. We are at the Colonial in 2013. And yesterday, we had a win, didn't yes. we? Actually, two wins. Two wins? Yes, LPGA and PGA Tour. Both using graphite design shapes? Yes. Now, here at the, here at the Byron Nelson, Yes. what was in play? Um, yesterday uh, we had a uh, on the PJ Tour a DI in the driver and mm -hmm. a, a GT in the three wood, mm -hmm. and on the LPJ Tour we had a uh, BB six mm -hmm. uh, win as well. So quite now, a... now the BB is a slightly revised version of the DI, right? Yes, uh, you'll see the BB in performance uh, and feel is slightly stiffer than the DI in the tip section. Mm -hmm. um, will produce a, a little bit stronger or lower ball flight. Mm -hmm. um, the DI is a higher launching low spin design shaft and I would say the BB is more of a mid launching low spin shaft um, mm -hmm. and we're uh, seeing good success on tour with players uh, transitioning into that product. Now the, the DI, what year was that introduced? The it DI was... is going on uh, five years now um, and it's, it's sort of uh, amazing to see the run that it's had. It's, it's uh, a, a shaft that fits today's market, uh, guys that mm -hmm. are looking for a lower spin shaft, but also something that helps get the ball up in the air. Mm -hmm. And the DI has done that um, for the, the consumer as well as the PJ professional or professional golfer. Mm -hmm. Now at the Masters, that was a DI as well, wasn't it? It was, it's a, a special mock-up uh, that we did for the player that was in black and white. Mm -hmm. um, we are in the process of making that part and it should hopefully, um, sometime this year, uh, maybe August, September, be available in, in the States. In, in the black and white color in the as black opposed and white. to the, so the orange a, and white. Yeah. Instead of orange and white, we'll do a, a limited run, or yeah. uh, um, I'm not saying it's a limited edition, just a limited run on mm -hmm. the black and white shaft, just because there's been some requests for it. So we can call them the blue shaft versus the orange shaft for the people that don't know the difference between the word DI and BB, Yes, right? exactly. So when we're looking at the blue shaft, the BB, you know, I noticed from the EI curves that they, it was just a little bit stiffer, maybe in the 17 to 20 inch range. Yeah, yeah that's correct. You'll see that with uh, all the performance and feedback we get from the players, uh, we try to modify shafts uh, for new technology coming out. Right. And we felt that with the player feedback that there was a little bit of a a feel that it was a little bit softer in the DI in the tip section. Mm -hmm. So the BB is a little bit firmer in the tip section, um, mm -hmm. but it also has, uh, it's a more of a one piece feel shaft, mm -hmm. where I think some of the stronger players that have played DI feel that it's, uh, it's, it's a lively, smoother feeling shaft. I'm not saying BB's harsh, it's just, it feels more one piece. And I think by moving the kick point up into the mid section, it's just changed the feel a little bit, yeah. but still gives us that, um, that lower spin that we're looking for, a lot of golfers are for better shot dispersion, yeah. uh, but uh, more of a, a stable shaft as well. Now, when you say shot dispersion, immediately GJ or torque comes to mind. Right. Yeah. Is there there's a little bit of a torque change as well? Yeah. Isn't there? When you get down to lower torque, uh, the shaft tightens up, mm -hmm. um, especially for uh, harder swingers or f f pretty much all golfers in right. swing speeds. But torque uh, keeps the head stable through impact. And also mm -hmm. depends on the type of material and the way that the shaft is designed. Torque can play a, a big role in the shaft's performance. So, is there is there a difference in interlay in those two shafts? Um, you know, I, I've seen patterns in play. There is. Yeah. Um, I'm not the engineering. I try to get more into the performance characteristics, and the engineers are engineers in Japan. Mm -hmm. Handle the, the 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 flag process is called. I've seen how they roll the shafts with all the flags and the mandrels, but yeah, there's a, a different process that they use. Mm -hmm. um, they probably move the flags up a little bit to mm -hmm. tighten it up and they can mm -hmm. use, we use more flags than the typical OEM. Uh, our flags and a flag is a, a piece of graphite cut and how we roll on the mad mandrel right. sort of dictates how the shaft performs or the characteristics. So um, we use anywhere from 12 to 18 flags uh, in graphite, so different That's patterns. That's a big number. That's, That's a, big, a number. big number. Where a typical, what I understand from our engineers, is a typical shaft is anywhere from 8 to 10. Mm -hmm. So obviously the more flags, the more time it takes to, to roll, right. and uh, the harder it is for uh, consistency. Yeah. In, and in and I, don't think, I don't think there's something that our viewers really understand, and that's that all golf shafts are made by hand. 
Yeah, they're it's handled. a bit like cigars. They're all hand yeah, rolled. Yeah, that's a good way. I've never used that analogy. That is true. Um, they're all hand rolled. We have um, there are 16 individuals that mm -hmm. have uh, computer screens in front of them with the patterns, and they uh, start the process and roll the shaft on a mandrel, mm -hmm. and it moves down the line. Uh, one person may install the first three or four larger flags. Oh, really? And then yeah, it goes down yeah. the process until the end. Mm -hmm. um, so a team. We have a team of those 16, I think, can do a pretty considerable amount of shafts in a day. Yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And there's there we have them where there are the more trained or more more experienced shaft rollers are the A line and then the B line, and over the years they move up. Mm -hmm. And we've had people rolling at graphite design for over 20 years. Yeah. That's all they know how to do is roll graphite shaft, but it's pretty amazing watching them do it. I've looked at the consistency of, of some of the shafts that are profiled already, and, and the consistency is incredible. Yeah. I mean, for for handmade product yeah. to be that consistent, oh, yeah. you, do, do you have a large rejection rate, or is it um, really kind of experience? I, it's not a large rejection rate, but the, com the, the way the machines are set up, and, yeah. and for the weighting, and after they're sanded to get the, the overall gram weight right, I, I want to say it's low, and I don't hold me. I think it's probably one out of twenty because they mm -hmm. have a rejection bin, yeah. and I've seen shafts go through it, and it's very little. It's, yeah. it's pretty amazing. I think um, the way that the, the rollers handle the product and, and the equipment that we have is top, top notch, and mm -hmm. our uh, you know rejection rate is quite low. Now, golfers, whenever they think about golf shafts, they think about kick point. Yeah. Everybody wants, everybody wants low launch. Everybody wants low spin. Right. What are you seeing out here in, in testing the DI versus the BB? Yeah. Um, out here, it's different. It it's really depends on the type of player. I mean, there are field players, and then there, I mean, there's two terms. There's hitters and swingers, guys mm -hmm. that hit the ball and guys that swing the club. So it just depends on the player and what they're looking for. And obviously, for me, it's training the OEMs. Uh, to understand what a shaft does. Mm -hmm. So if a player walks into a trailer or walks up to an OEM rep on the range and say, you know, I, I need to get the ball up in the air a little bit more, or I'm looking for something that can more right to left, or um, they know what these shafts do, and, and, and they lean on certain shaft manufacturers for shaft performance. Mm -hmm. So if they feel comfortable with a part and it performs with to player A, maybe it'll work with player B. But then that's where I come in and hopefully educate them that the DI is a little bit higher launching, lower spinning. And if some guys have felt that it was too high launch, the BB is a new part or a newer part that will bring down that ball flight and maybe mm -hmm. get a little bit tighter shot dispersion due to the torque being a little bit lower and then it's a little bit stiffer in the tip. Mm -hmm. So I do have options. It's, it's, it's so can we have something that launches a little too low or with not quite enough spin? I mean, that that's... Every amateur that comes to me for fitting wants low launch, low spin. Yeah. But if the ball's not spinning, it's going to corkscrew. It's going to fall out of the air. I mean, how low is too low? Do you ever yeah. see it? Oh yeah, I've seen. Um, one of the uh, manufacturers said a, a player wants the lowest launching, lowest spin shaft, and I have those, and I don't pull them out. It's the the P nine thousand three. Uh, it's a red shaft that we have, and I brought it out, and uh, I don't think the player can get it above. 1700 on the spin mm -hmm. it was just a pure knuckleball mm -hmm. and we were laughing because we knew i knew what it was going to do right that he wouldn't be able to get the spin or the launch mm -hmm. and he's like wow this shaft doesn't spin at all and, and the rep was like well you asked for a low launch low spin so then the player here's the took, ultimate right yeah, yeah so here's the took ultimate. It to the, the ball fall out of the air they yeah. took it to the extreme and then they understood what they were looking for and i yeah. think it opens up their mind because you know the tour player has access to the best parts and the best equipment in the world and sometimes they need to realize that if they ask for something, they can get it. We can do it out here. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty exciting to see when you do shock someone out here because they're such good players. Yeah. My first experience with graphite design was actually with a hybrid shaft. Yes. I had a YS hybrid. Yes. Way back when. You don't even make it anymore. But I used to, I was fitting indoors at the time and I would find the best couple of choices for somebody and then build them three hybrids and send them out to the range. Mm -hmm. And they kept coming back and they kept saying, I want this blue one, which right. kind of surprised me. Yeah. And it happened over and over and over again. And finally I had to go and build an EI machine and understand the shift. Yeah. And, and so there it was, you know, kind of a monotonic decline, a nice smooth decline with a long, stable, firm tip. Yes. That's what graphite design is known for. I think we're known for a very smooth feeling 
mm -hmm. uh, a shaft that has good feel. Um, what really, you know, put us on the map was the YS6, with, you know, with our partnership with Titleist, um, with the four-inch parallel. Mm -hmm. The parallel is the tip section. I refer to it as the engine of the or the shaft. That's where you get the feel from and the power right. and sort of the characteristics. And that four-inch parallel was so versatile because we could tip tip trim two inches on it or an inch on it mm -hmm. and to fit it into players and that's where the YS hybrid shaft was so versatile because that also had a, a, um, a four inch tip parallel on it and when players were looking for an 18 degree for a certain launch I can go with them with so many different tip trimming options to create the launch they were looking for because that shaft felt great uh, when it came out probably eight, nine years ago, the YS hybrid shaft. Yeah, yeah. Um, the parallel and the way it performed in the 85 gram was just a great part. And I had, it was so versatile to, for tip trimming right. and it fits so many different lofts. And you know, today, if you looked at the Daryl survey for you know, hybrid count in shafts, I think the 85 to 90 gram part still leads the way in, mm -hmm. uh, in hybrid shaft performance. How, how different is a hybrid shaft from a driver shaft or a fairway shaft? Yeah, completely different. I mean, you're talking a, you know, a 46 inch blank mm -hmm. to down to a 41 inch blank. So two mm -hmm. different types of shafts from tip diameter, from weight, mm -hmm. um, durability issues. I mean, you look at hybrids today, we're, we're hitting them out of rough, we're hitting down on them. Um, it's it's a, a utility club that we use from everywhere. I mean, it's, it's a beefed up iron where the amateur and some professionals hit down on it. So that tip section and the material has to be much stronger for durability issues because you don't want to have breakage at an OEM. We don't want to have breakage on a, at a tour event. Yeah. So a hybrid shaft is, is a con completely different beast. I think that's the one shaft that is still being developed and designed. I think I think the driver shaft and fairway wood shaft is we're pretty much the manufacturers of known what we can do, but I still think that box is still untapped on design mm -hmm. and uh, performance characteristics. Um, we're seeing lighter and lighter coming into play. Now we're starting to see that 55, 75 gram part, um, just because graphite is so good and our engineers are so advanced that they're able to design a, a shaft at that lighter weight that can be durable and perform in a hybrid. But also- You're talking about 55 and 70 gram hybrid shafts, shafts. hybrid yeah. not driver shafts. not driver shafts hybrid shafts if you look yeah. at some of the oems they're they're requesting that part Are um, they? yeah because it increases club head speed right and uh obviously club head speed equals distance so everyone is wants that five to seven yards longer yeah. um so if you i i always relate to the lpj tour as where the average consumer should look or the average golfer because right. that's more consistent than what the average golfer plays is what on the LPJ tour. Those weights, those swing weights, the, the type of shafts, right. just translate better into performance. Now, Graphite Design, tell me a little about the company. It's been around? Uh, over 20 years out of yeah. Chichibu, which is um, in northern part of uh, Japan, about two hours north of mm -hmm. uh, Tokyo in the beautiful mountains. We have a 500 yard driving range and hitting bays and Trackman, we were one of the uh, first to buy a, a launch monitor in the golf industry for shaft manufacturers. Then we opened a U.S. office mm -hmm. uh, uh, about 12 years ago in Southern California. Uh, we've uh, moved on and Graphite Design has pulled back into Japan and uh, opened up a distributorship, which has worked out great. We're still selling and representing uh, Graphite Design in the U.S. and mm -hmm. in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and sales are still going strong. We went from a, a larger, you know, mid-sized company to a smaller group, but everything's great with uh, Pro's Choice Golf Shafts. We're, we're the exclusive distributor for graphite design in the U.S. and in, in Europe as well. Yeah. Now, the, um, the, the parent company, Graphite Design, yes. what other kinds of graphite products do they make? Yeah. Um, the, the, the founding fathers, uh, the gentleman that started, came from uh, a fishing industry, graphite. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a lot of experience. And recently, in the last couple of years, we're getting, it's called GDR, Graphite Design Racing, which mm -hmm. is a bike manufacturing. They started with road bikes. Um, some of the road bikes were used in uh, the Beijing Olympics with the Japanese cycling team. In the last couple of years, I think three years ago, I rode a, uh, a prototype mountain bike. So we're in the mountain oh, biking really? now. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're doing a car You're a biker. Yeah, mountain bike yeah. a little bit. In San Diego, it's amazing uh, terrain. It's yeah. Great weather, obviously, but there's some good mountains in San Diego. Um, and now we're getting into bike components. We're handlebars, seat posts, um, stems, forks. So any of the components, I think, uh, are also being uh, tried. 
And then we're doing, a, I think with a, a motor, uh, our car industry, we're doing a uh, um, torque bars or stabilizers in the front struts. It's a carbon fiber bar that con mm -hmm. controls the stability of the front of the end of the car. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, pre uh, graphite so, is... So graphite designs isn't just golf shafts. No, it's, it's, you, you got to diversify in today's market and I think that's what they're looking at. And, and our engineers are all so strong in many other fields as well. And, and so that experience from other fields, it, it, it yeah. leads to the development of what we're seeing now. Stronger, yeah. but lighter shafts. Yeah. I, I or play, turn that around the other way. The lighter shafts are as strong as the heavy shafts yeah. from two years ago. Yeah, I think you know, I played golf uh, this past weekend with an individual who was plus three handicap who had a 43 gram driver at 46 and a quarter inches. 43 grams. And it was unbelievable. Yeah. And perfect ball fight, super high launch, great dispersion. Yeah. And uh, it performed. And, you know, yeah. that's. To so, me, so, so getting a 40 gram shaft now doesn't mean like a wet noodle. No, I think the, the torque and the, the materials that uh, the manufacturers, the, the pre preg manufacturers offer to us right. yeah. uh, is, is very durable. Yeah. And it's performing. And like I said, I think with all the years of development of shafts, I think our engineers are now understanding how to develop lightweight shafts that perform. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Well, it's going to be an interesting time. It Eric, is. thanks. Thanks for having me today.